Hey guys, what's going on? This is Pants Art Dragon, and today we'll be doing an analysis of the changes coming to the defensive items, and of course, doing the new items Titanic Hydra and Sterex Gauge. The table of contents of this video will be followed as magic resist items first, health items second, armor items third, and then finally, the Titanic Hydra and Sterex Gauge, in my opinion of those items. Remember, this won't be all theory, as I've tested some of the new items out on the PBE server, so I do have a good feel for these items in general. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So first off, Iceburn's Gauntlet, Zeke's Harbinger, and Glacier Shot are being reduced by 50 gold. This is a small change, and I just want to get this out of the way, but really it's only 50 gold, so not much of a big impact here. Alright, so next up we're going to be talking about the Agus of Legion and the other things that it builds into since it all got changed. As you can see, cost goes down by 300 gold. New build path is no magic mantle plus crystalline bracer. Base health regen is now 100% instead of 0. And aura no longer gives health regen and only gives 15 magic resist. So this item is still probably going to be good. I mean, giving plus 15 magic resist is still a lot. And of course the cost goes down, but honestly it was giving too much free stats to your team. And I do feel like with this change, greedy junglers will go more like Spirit Visage and Banshee's Veil. Because literally in solo queue and in competitive play, you'd gain such a big advantage if you're against a lot of magic damage. And you bought this item and got it pretty early. And it was just super OP. But now it's just like a good item. It's not mandatory to have anymore, but of course you'll still see people buy it. Next up is going to be the Banner of Command, the AP version of the Locket of Solari. As you can see, the same stat changes are happening to this item as they did with the Aegis of the Legion. The only difference is they're making it cheaper because of the nerfs to the Aegis of the Legion. So you always got to keep that in mind. Next up is going to be the Locket of the Iron Solari. Same thing is happening here of course, but they changed how the shield works now. So it's going to give more shield power, but the duration is lowered to 2 seconds. So. You know, in some cases it's a nerf, in some cases it's a buff. In situations where your team is going to get bursted out, it's obviously a buff. But for champions who haven't been hit by the burst and still have the shield for 5 seconds, it's a nerf. But unlike the other items which is compensated for the nerfs to the aura, this is only compensated by 50 gold, while Aegis is lowered by 300 and the banner of command is lowered by 250. Overall, not as good as before but it's probably still going to be bought by your supports and junglers. Next up, Negatron and Null Magic Mantle are being reduced by 50 gold, which means slight buff to all magic resist items, with the exception of Aegis of the Legion of course. Spectre Cowl's magic resist is also being increased by 5, making tanks in the top lane against magic damage much stronger. Next up, Spirit Visage is also getting a buff, the cost is being reduced, the magic resist is being increased from the Spectre's Cowl, and the health regen is being increased to 150%, so a little bit more of a synergy with its passive. And Banshee's Veil is also kind of getting the same treatment, but instead of health regen, it's going to be more increased magic resist, which is probably better. Overall, all these changes are definitely leading to something interesting, and that makes tanks more powerful against magic damage. So the meta might change because of this, and you'll see less magic damage top laners, or maybe something more utility, like Lulu top and giving shields and stuff. This also means you'll see some AD champions being more in the meta, and that's also emphasized since later in this video, you'll see that the armor items are actually getting a nerf. But we gotta do the health items, and first up is gonna be Warmog's armor. So cost is being increased by 250, health regen is being increased to 200%, and the old passive is removed, but the other half of the passive does stay if you have more than 3000 health. And this is actually like really good. I would definitely say it's a buff. The average health regen a tank has at level 12, let's say. And I'll be using Maokai's base health regen for this example. He has 17 health regen, and you times it by 2 and you get 34. And with the old passive, let's say he had 2700 hit point, the number would be 27. And by the way, both are calculated per 5, of course. And since Warmogs is more like a late game item, not like something you'd buy early since you need resists. It's actually definitely worth way more since you'll probably get it around level 16. And remember, unlike the old passive, your health regen also goes with the 3% coming from Warmog's heart. So you do definitely have much more health regen than before. So in a sense, this item does get a buff. Although if you buy it before 3000 health, I'd say it's a nerf since it does cost more. Next up, we're going to be talking about the Rage's Glory. As you can see, the cost is being reduced by 100, but the Catalyst passive is being removed. So I guess you wouldn't want to finish this item in the early game. But honestly, I feel like this is still really good in Maokai, but everyone else, with the nerfs that came to it in a recent patch, I still wouldn't buy this on most champions unless I liked the health and mana sets it gave me. So Olaf and Maokai definitely come to mind. Overall, I might say it is a nerf though. Because maybe in a team fight, you might have leveled up and it may have saved you or gave you enough mana to cast that one skill. Either way, I don't really like this item. 
Next up, we're going to be talking about the Cinder Hulk, and right here, the health is being increased to 400, while the bonus health is being reduced by 10%. Remember, it says bonus health, not your maximum health, so it only scales up the runes, masteries, and items. And it's a nerf once you get past 1000 bonus health, but a buff if you have less than 1000 bonus health. So it's a buff early game, mid game it's a bit of both depending where you are, but late game it's a nerf. But it's not too much of a change so you know tanks will still be good. And finally we'll be talking about the changes with the armor items. First off let's talk about the thorn mail. Ugh. Ugh. Cost increased to 2300, now only reflects 15% instead of 30%, and 25% of my bonus armor just like Ramus. Uh, I'm not sure about this item anymore. But I would definitely say that it might be more better in the mid game. Since it now scales off your bonus armor, you're already returning 25 magic damage. This also now has synergy with something like Leona's W, Ramus's W2, and abilities like that. But Thornmail is not an item you buy in the mid game. You only buy it when you have enough health, and that usually comes in the late game. So I can definitely say this is a nerf with the cost, of course, being increased too. But maybe if I'm like super tanky and I don't know, they're ADK or super fed, then maybe I'll still buy it. Next up we're going to be talking about the Raptor's Cloak and cost goes up but the health regen goes up by 50% and the movement speed is being reduced by 20% but there's a new effect where the movement speed decays after 2 seconds. So I'm going to say the movement speed was not a buff or a nerf. I think the changes equalize each other out but stat wise 100 gold for 50% more health regen is worth it since a rejuvenation bead does cost 180 gold. Same thing's happening in Ohm Wrecker, but the ZZ Rot Portal is getting a different change where it actually costs less, and the Void Spawn's health decay is now a percent of their current health rather than maximum. So, since it's current health, doesn't that mean it's going to go on forever? That's a very interesting point. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think anyone ever uses this item because it's just a really weird item to figure out when to use it. Is the active actually useful, or is it just there, you know, for show? But of course, overall a buff, but... Who knows if people will actually use it or figure it out. Next up, Warden's Mail costs 50 gold more. Slight nerf, whatever. But finally, something that is getting a big change and that is the Random Zolman. So, cost is going down by 150 gold. Health is going down by 100. Armor is going down by 10. But there's a new effect where it reduces critical strike damage by 10%. And now, slows for 4 seconds instead of scaling with magic resist and armor. Which is a buff, because you need 400 armor and magic resist in total to actually get 4 seconds. So this item is getting a few nerfs to its base stats. You're losing about 317 gold worth of stats, including the cost being reduced of course. But you do get a better slow and more protection against AD carries. But since that passive is so situational and only applies to AD carries, Trindamir, and Yasuo, it's not looking too good against AD champions like Jace, Urgot, etc. So I feel like I'd emphasize less on buying this item now. Maybe buy it later in the game once the AD carry has a lot of damage. And finally, even though this game has been live since patch 5.15, Dead Man's Plate, but I didn't really go over it in any of my other videos, but I think you guys know what this thing does already, so I'll just give my general opinion about it and how it compares to other items. Honestly, either this or Sunfire Cape is going to be the new Randuins. The stats that it gives for the amount of gold, plus also being like a mini Righteous Glory, makes this item really good. I'll probably emphasize on buying this more than Randuins at the moment. So I'll say this with all uh, confidence, this is going to be the new Randuins Omen. Next up is going to be Steric's Gauge, so it gives 500 health, 25% of your base attack damage, and when you take enough damage, you gain increased size, 25% more of your base attack damage, and a shield equal to 30% of your maximum health. But I actually think the shield does decay faster than Tom Kench's E. Overall, I'm not too hyped about this item. I guess it's like good for champions who scale with AD and health, so it's like the mindset of building Phage, without the Phage passive of course. But since this item scales with base attack damage, it's definitely better when you have levels and since the shield is based off how much health you have at the moment, it'll be like a 4th or 5th or 6th item on champions that like health and AD. But I'll be straight up, I don't really like this item a lot. But one item I actually really like is the new Titanic Hydra. This item costs the same as Ravenous Hydra, but it's meant for tanks. So it gives 400 health, 50 attack damage, 100% base health regen, and a new interesting passive inactive. So unlike Tiamat and Hydra, this scales with your maximum health, and you get increased damage to the target you're hitting. But 5 plus 1% of your maximum health isn't that much, as it's only plus 35 with 3000 hit point. But the next part of this passive is actually really good. So enemies behind your target take 40 plus 2.5% of your maximum health, which equals about 115 damage if you have 3000 health. And the cone is actually really wide. And finally, we got this active, where it does 40 plus 10% of your maximum health on your next basic auto attack and makes the area effect larger and also resets your auto attack. So with 3000 hit point, you can do 340 damage, which is actually pretty good. 
but it's not that active i'm looking at this whole time it's a passive and how well it synergizes with some champions and these champions would be people who scale with attack damage attack speed and hit point so some champions i like to list off with this item trundle shivana skarner very tanky vi you know champions you can give a lot of autos right and i'll be honest here it's actually a pretty good item i've used it definitely better than sterix gauge and on the right champion it can be very powerful so expect this item to be used in the next patch. Alright, so that's it for this video. In conclusion, you'll probably see new build paths on champions. You'll probably see less AP tops and junglers. So the Runeglaive meta is like gonna probably die maybe. As it is already with Nidalee and Elise getting a hit. You'll probably see more AD top laners and mid laners. And lastly, you'll probably be seeing champions that can use Titanic Hydra to the fullest efficiency. Anyways, I am Panzer Dragon, and I'll see you guys next time.